we're going to take a look at how we can build the snake game in Python using the module Pygame. To make it really simple to understand, we're going to break down the process of making the game into three simple steps. First, we're gonna make a grid, then we're gonna add the snake, and afterwards, we're gonna add the apple. So let's jump right in, and if you wanna see more of these types of videos in the future, then let me know by leaving a like on this video. Over here in the editor, you'll see that I have prepared a couple of lines of code. And if I go ahead and execute this code, you'll see that all that I get at the moment is a black window. And this is going to be the window within which we'll be building the game. So let me go ahead and explain the code that I have at the moment, just so that we're all on the same page. To begin, I've imported a couple of modules. The first one is message box from tkinter. This allows us to create small dialog boxes, which will become useful later on. In addition to that, I've also imported the modules Pygame, System, and Random. Now, from all the modules that we have over here, the only one that you need to install separately is the module Pygame. If you have not yet installed Pygame, then go down to the terminal and write pip install Pygame. And with that installed, you should have no problems running this project. Below the imports, I have declared the window width and the window height, and both of these are going to be 500 pixels. After that, we have initialized the window using the pygame display set mode. And as arguments within this function, we simply pass in the window width and the window height. The next thing that you can see is that I've created a pygame clock. And what this clock helps us do is it helps us control how fast the game runs. Below in the main method, you can see that I'm calling the method tick on the clock. And I've passed in a value of eight into this function call. Now what this does is it limits the frames per second of our game to eight. The game will never run faster than at eight frames per second. The remainder of the code in the main loop is pretty standard stuff. So at the very top, I have a small block of code that allows us to quit the game whenever we press on the small X icon on top of the window. Apart from that, I'm also calling the function fill on the window and what I'm doing here is quite simply filling the window with the color black. So that is exactly why when we run this, you can see that the color of the window is entirely black. And the final thing over here, which I haven't talked about yet, is the display flip. And all that this does is that it updates our display. So now that we have this black canvas within which we can draw our game, the next step is going to be to create the grid. I'm going to set the number of columns and the number of rows to 25 each. And since our grid is going to be composed of small boxes, we're going to need to specify the width and the height of each of these individual boxes. The width of the individual boxes is going to be equal to the window width divided by the number of columns. And the height of each individual box is going to be equal to the window height divided by the number of rows. I'm then going to create an empty array called grid, which we're going to use later on. Moving forward, we're going to create a class called box. The grid which we're going to create is going to be made up of instances of this class. So you can think of the individual boxes in our grid as instances of the class box. Within the init method, we're going to specify the x and y coordinates of this box within the entire grid. And the second method which we're going to add to the class box is going to be called draw. Now this function is going to help us draw the individual boxes onto our grid. And it is going to take two arguments. The first one is going to be the place where we want to draw the box, which is going to be our window, and then, of course, the color of the box. And within this function, we're going to be calling the drawRect function of the Pygame module. This function quite simply allows us to draw a rectangle within our window. So as arguments, we're going to pass in the window, the color of the box, the x and y position of the box, as well as the width and the height of the box. To make the grid, we're now going to create instances of the class box and store them in an array. So let's make a for loop that loops over all the columns and creates an array for each one. And within that for loop, we're going to create another for loop that loops over all the rows. And within that loop, we're going to append an instance of the class box to the array. And finally, we can append the array which we've just created to the grid array that we created earlier. 
Within the main function, we're going to change one more thing to create our grid, which is we're going to call the draw method on each of the individual boxes in our grid array. So let's go ahead and run this and you'll see that we have this really nice grid, which is going to be the basis for our game. Let's move on and create the snake. So to make the snake, we're going to create another array and all the boxes that are stored within the array are going to be parts of the snake. When we initially start the game, we're going to make our snake be five boxes long. To do that, we can create a for loop that has five iterations, and on every iteration, one box is added to the snake array. In the main loop, we're now going to specify the direction that the snake goes in when we start the game, and the position of the snake at the very beginning. To specify the direction that the snake is going in, we're going to create an x delta and a y delta, and set it to zero and minus one respectively. And this is going to specify the change in the position on every while loop iteration. The initial position of the snake is going to be specified by the x pause and y pause values, which are each going to be set equal to 10. In our main loop, we're going to increment the x position and the y position by the x delta and the y delta respectively. And this is precisely what is going to let us move the snake across the screen. Below that, we need to specify the two cases in which the game ends. The first case is whenever the snake hits the wall, and the second case is when the snake bites itself. For the first case, so when the wall is hit, we're going to create a boolean value that turns to true whenever the snake hits the wall. So we're simply going to check if the x position is smaller than 0 or greater than 24, or the y position is smaller than 0 or greater than 24. Now some of you might ask the question why we're checking for the value of 24 if we created 25 rows and 25 columns. And the reason for that is quite simply because we start with an index of 0, and going from 0 to 24 contains 25 values if you include the 0. And as long as the snake is within the boundaries of our window, so the wall is not hit, we want to check whether the snake has bitten itself. To check for this, we can simply write if not wall hit, and then within this if block, we can check if the next position that the snake should move to is within the array snake. In the if statement that follows, we're going to check if either one of these two cases that we just talked about applies. So if the snake bites itself, or if the wall is hit, we're going to end the game by creating a small dialog box which says that the game is over, and in addition to that, we're going to interrupt the main loop by setting the run variable to false. If, however, the snake is still alive, so it's not hit a wall or it's not bitten itself, then we want the game to run normally, and we're going to cover that case in an else statement. In this else block, we're first going to create a new head for the snake, which is going to be located at the position at the very top of the snake. And since this new head is supposed to be a part of the snake, we also have to add it to the corresponding snake array. In addition, we're introducing a variable called remove tail and setting it to true. The reason why we need this variable is because by default when the snake moves forward then we always want to delete the last block. However when the snake eats an apple and gets longer we don't want to do that so we want to have a variable to toggle that. But we're going to create everything that concerns the apple at the very end so let's not worry about that now. The last thing that we're going to add here is another if statement which is going to check if the remove tail variable is true, and if it is, then we want to delete the last block from the snake array. This is going to ensure that the length of the snake stays unchanged. The final thing that we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all the boxes in the snake array, and then call the draw function on each of these individual boxes so that we can display it in another color. If I run this code at this stage, you can see that we have created a snake and it appears in blue. It moves up the screen and as soon as it hits the top of the screen, a small dialog box appears that tells us that we've hit the very top and that we have died. We're getting close to the end and this next step is going to be pretty simple we're going to create a variable which is going to be assigned the value of the user input. If the left arrow key is pressed, then we want the snake to move to the left. However, we only want that to happen if the snake is not currently moving to the right. So in the if statement, we're also going to check that x delta is not equal to 1. Because remember that an x delta value equal to 1 means that the snake is moving one box to the right for every while loop iteration that occurs. And then we can set x delta to minus 1 and y delta to 0 because this pair of values corresponds to moving left. Similarly, if we're pressing the right key, we want the snake to move to the right, but we only want to allow that whenever the snake is not currently going to the left. 
So in this if statement, we need to say that x delta cannot be equal to minus 1. Now the same logic also applies to the up and down arrow keys, which we're also going to add in. If we run this game now, you can see that I can change the snake's direction by pressing the arrow keys. And what you can also see is that if I run into myself and bite myself, then the game also ends. The very final step is now adding the apple, which is going to make the snake longer whenever we eat one. So at the very top of our code, we're going to create a new array called apples, and it is going to store all the apples. Then within the else block that we talked about earlier, we're going to check the length of the apples array. And if there are no apples in the apples array, we're going to create a possibility to spawn apples. When we spawn an apple, we need to make sure that the apple does not spawn on a block that is part of the snake's body. That is why we're going to create another array called spawn locations. And this array is going to contain all the possible spawn locations that are not on the snake's body. In order to fill this array with possible spawn locations, we're going to iterate through all the columns and all the rows, and we're going to check if an individual box is not in the snake. And if it isn't in the snake, then we can append it to the spawn locations array. Then we're going to say that if the number of possible spawn locations for an apple is equal to three, so if there's only three more boxes within the entire grid that do not belong to the snake, then we want to say that we've won the game. And in that case, we're gonna have a small message box appear saying that we're the winner. In addition to that, we're also going to set the run variable to false because of course, if we win the game, then we don't want to continue running the while loop. After that, we're going to create an apple on one of the possible spawn locations that does not lie on the snake. The variable which stores the spawn location of the apple is going to simply be called apple. And we're going to append this apple to the array called apples. Since we've now taken care of the case where there are no apples on the screen and one apple needs to be spawned, we also need to take care of the case where there is an apple on the screen and the apple is eaten. To do that, we're going to create another if statement, which is going to check if the length of the apples array is equal to one. That means exactly one apple is on our screen. And within this if statement, we're adding another if statement, which is going to check if the position of the snake's head corresponds to the position of the apple. If that's the case, then we want to remove the apple from the apples array and the number of apples in the array is going to be zero again. And of course, we also set the remove tail variable to false. The consequence of this is that the tail of the snake will not be removed on the while loop iteration when the apple is eaten. That makes the snake longer. The last thing we need to do is we need to check if the box is in the array apples and if it is, we want to color it red. And now finally, if we go ahead and press play, we can see that we've finally gotten to the point we want it to be. We have gotten our game of snake working. You can see that if I eat an apple, the snake gets longer and I can also move around freely. So we've created our game of snake. If this video helped you out, be sure to leave a like and as always, see you in the next one.